why acne is a good thing. Yeah, okay, I know the title is a little bit of a stretch, but I wanted to make this video today to teach you guys a little bit more about how your body works and why we get the annoying symptoms that we do. So we have been taught to hate those annoying symptoms and do everything that we can to kind of block them, mute them, stop them, and just put an end to them but really those symptoms are actually a good thing. So by the end of this video, you will have a greater understanding of how your body works, why you're experiencing these annoying symptoms, and how your body ties in together to try and do right by you to try and heal, although sometimes it doesn't necessarily feel that way. Um, so keep watching because I guarantee after this video, you will feel a lot more confident about your understanding of your body. I can help you out. I can help you out, I can help you out Hey guys and welcome to this week's video. If you hear some chainsaws or something random in the background then I apologize. I haven't actually planned anything for this video or written like little a script or some dot points because I just kind of had this idea to share this with you when I was driving home from my doctor's appointment actually. Um, so I just kind of grabbed my camera um, and jumped outside in front of the beautiful trees um, to try and share a little bit of light on what symptoms you may be experiencing and what they kind of mean. So in the past we have learnt to, or at least I and a lot of my friends and family have learnt to really hate our symptoms. So for example if we get a headache, oh we've got a headache again. Or if we're experiencing acne, oh we're breaking out again. Or um, like high blood pressure, we go oh no we have high blood pressure or anything like that. They are all there for a reason um, and I'm going to explain that a little bit more in this video today. I wanted to start by saying that the symptoms that you are experiencing are actually very important and they're actually your body's way of either trying to heal itself or communicate with you. So for example, a headache. So a headache can be a symptom of being dehydrated, so it means that you don't have enough water. Now, bringing on a headache is not obviously going to help the body in hydrating itself. But when we have a headache, it can be the body's way of communicating to us that we need more water. So in that case, we shouldn't fear the headache. We should actually listen to our bodies and go, okay, I've got a headache. Do I need to drink more water? And then we do so and we help, the, help our bodies and help alleviate that symptom by fixing the root cause and the root cause being that we're dehydrated. So in that case, a lot of us have been trained when we feel those headaches to take Panadol. Okay, so we're like, this, this pain, we don't like it. Let's take Panadol and let's mask that symptom and block the pain. So it blocks the pain receptors, but then people don't drink water and the root cause hasn't actually gone away. So you're still dehydrated, you just can't feel the pain of it anymore. So that is why I'm so passionate about this whole root cause approach. Um, and it's something that I didn't actually know about until last year. So until I got acne and I looked further into it. And there's so many other examples of that. But I also want to discuss how your body tries to heal itself is let's think of a splinter. So let's say that you've just broken your skin and you've got a splinter in there. There's a couple of things that happen. So the first thing that happens is is that you may start bleeding or you start getting inflamed around the area. So that inflammation, although it doesn't look good and we see the red and we see the swelling and we're like, uh, this isn't good, um, and obviously the splinter might hurt, but the inflammation itself, even though when anything is inflamed, even when we have breakouts and they get really red and inflamed, we think that that's a bad thing, but really that inflammation means that your body is trying to get the blood cells to the area because in your bloodstream is where your immune system lies. So to really simplify things for a second, the three main things that I want to talk about in your blood are obviously you've got your red blood cells that carry the oxygen around your body and we need oxygen to power pretty much 
every single reaction in our body um, or at least the oxygen to make the energy to power all those reactions um, and then we've got the white blood cells so I like to think of them and teach them like um, they are the soldiers so your white blood cells are your immune system and then you've got the platelets um, and you've got a couple of other things as well but I just want to stick with those three um, and so the platelets are the things that are going to for example if you cut yourself they're the things that are going to repair your skin um, and create that balance barrier again so that your skin is, is not open, it's not a broken um, open wound. So in order for your white blood cells to get to the area that is it's their most needed, that's what happens is inflammation occurs so it brings um, the blood and all those cells to that area in need. So your white blood cells, uh, what they do is they fight off any pathogens, so they fight off any bacteria that might be in that open wound, um, and they really just try and fight the invaders off. So if there's a splinter, obviously they want to try and clean up that wound, and if there's any bacteria on the end of that splinter, they want to get it get it off. Um, now obviously things like if you have a big splinter you're actually going to have to pull that out yourself um, so yeah you still obviously need to kind of remove that physical intrusion but in terms of the open wound the inflammation actually shows that the body is bringing those soldiers, um, those nurses, those doctors, whatever you want to call the white blood cells, um, to that area so that it can clean it up and then the platelets can block it and heal. You don't just want to have the platelets block up that open wound without having the white blood cells clean it up and kill off any bacteria that comes inside because if the white blood cells are not killing off that bacteria, then the platelets can actually trap an infection inside of your skin. Um, and then obviously that's going to cause for even more inflammation um, and it will need to be addressed with um, bigger means. So obviously even more white blood cells and it's going to be a harder attack to kind of fend off. So that's what's happening underneath the skin when you get something like that, something like a splinter, or just when you um, have an open wound or you cut yourself, that's how the repair process works. So that inflammation, that redness around the um, intrusion or whatever has occurred, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That means that your, your immune system is working and it's bringing those cells to the area to do their job. So that's how your body heals itself. I mean, inflammation can be a bad thing if you have too much and if your body is out of control, if the inflammation is out of control, but it is also a good thing when your body is trying to heal. So it's, it's like anything, it's important to kind of have a balance. Um, so I already knew the importance of inflammation and how it can be a good thing and bring those white blood cells and the platelets and whatnot to the area that needs it. Um, but I didn't really understand, particularly with acne, we are definitely not trained to get a pimple and be like, oh, good job, buddy, you're healing. Um, we are completely trained to do the opposite um, and hate when we break out. But really, acne is just your body's way of detoxing anything that's not quite right inside. So it kind of um, covers both the healing part of symptoms um, and it also covers the communication part as well. So acne is there to obviously help your your pores and your cells detox anything that it needs to get rid of so it is the largest excretory system in the body there's a couple more like the kidneys and the liver and everything like that um, but it's the largest excretory organ in the body so if there is anything out of balance or if you need to detox anything the skin is usually going to be the first to show it um, and so number one it it does the healing in that it tries to get the toxins and everything out of your cell and out of your body through your pores and it also does the communication part as well so it alerts you to the fact that something isn't right internally now I guess just like with headaches there's lots of different things that can cause headaches there's lots of different things that can cause acne as well so I talk about the different root causes of acne and what those things are in my root cause video um, but it is important for you to start asking those questions and kind of being playing detective and trying to ask, well, what is causing this? And it might be your hormones, but it might not be your hormones. It might be your gut health, it might be your diet, it might be a whole list of things. So go and watch that video if you don't actually know what it is. Um, I know that mine are my hormones. I do know that a year ago it was also my gut health because uh, I was on antibiotics for over a year and a half. 
So I knew that gut health had a huge part in that. And if you haven't taken probiotics uh, or if you haven't considered your gut health, then it, gut health probably is playing a part in your acne as well. So I would definitely start taking probiotics or at least look into gut health. Uh, but yeah, for now, I know that I've addressed my gut health and that's all good. It is also stress for me at the moment because I am working really hard and trying to get an apartment in Brisbane and yeah, all of that jazz on the side. But hormones are definitely a big one for me. So it's just a matter of looking a little bit deeper and playing detective and working out what the root cause is causing the symptoms of acne. So even though acne is technically a condition and it can be diagnosed, it is also a symptom that is telling us something isn't right internally. So that's why I am saying that acne is a good thing. Even though it's not really, acne does draw our attention to what's not right internally. And let's just say that it's your hormones, or let's just say that you do have PCOS, but you are not aware of it. By getting the acne, you can actually then start asking those questions and start exploring your hormones and start exploring the PCO, the potential PCOS because if you let the PCOS go undiagnosed for a long period of time, you might actually start having fertility issues in the future. So by getting acne and by it drawing your attention internally, you might actually jump on anything that might be wrong or any imbalance inside and fix the problem before it elevates and becomes an even bigger problem. So in that case, acne can actually be a good thing, but even if it is just like you've just gone off the pill and your hormones are out of balance, the acne is just your body's way of trying to detox those excess hormones and try and restore things in your body. So I know that it's not fun, but I want you to start seeing your symptoms as kind of like a red flag and an invitation to explore further into what your body is actually doing, what your body is telling you and what it might be trying to fix internally. So what might need to be healed um, or balanced in your body in order to make things run smoothly. So when people say, oh, acne is genetic, there's nothing I can do about it. I disagree with that. Yes, you might have to eat a diet that is slightly cleaner than somebody else who doesn't have acne that can be genetic and it can just be that you are more sensitive to insulin. You might have that insulin imbalance and you might be, you know, about to get diabetes down the track and your acne is actually drawing your attention inside so that you can address it before it gets to that stage. So I don't want you to love your acne, but I also don't want you to hate it and think that it is like there's no answer because there definitely is an answer and it is different for a lot of people so it's not just like I can tell you it's your hormones go fix them because there are those six root causes that it could be and it can be a multitude of those six causes but it is really important for you to start asking the question well why is this coming up what is causing this um, and start really taking that root cause approach so by all means go to the doctor and go on antibiotics or go on the pill and clear up your face. I understand that those things work. They work at getting rid of the symptom, but they don't work at getting rid of the root cause. So if you do have PCOS and you go on the pill and you go on antibiotics to clear your skin, you've cleared your skin, but you also haven't investigated your potential PCOS or your potential diabetes or anything else. It might not even be a particular condition or disease that you're headed towards, but it might just be an increase in testosterone levels that you need to address. But if you're masking the symptom with prescriptions, then you forget that they need to be addressed and you don't look further into it and then it can cause a, a bigger problem down the track, even just with your fertility. And I do understand that if your acne is affecting your mental health severely. I've definitely been there. I do understand that some people do just want to go on the pill and go on antibiotics and just get it clear and then start looking into it further. But from experience, I can say that if you do go back on the pill or if you do go on the pill to fix it, it's just going to all come back when you try and go off the pill. So I would rather stay off the pill and just 
get it sorted rather than procrastinating the problem and then having to address it in like a, a year's time or whatever when you try and go off the pill because it it will most likely come back um, so yeah I just I want to encourage you guys I'm not to judge if you do want to go down that path but just know that that is the path where you're covering up your symptoms it's not the path where you're addressing what's causing the symptoms because the only way to actually stop those symptoms is to address what's causing them rather than just to mask them um, so for example with the headache if you just kept taking Panadol and you never drank any more water you wouldn't end up fixing that headache it's just the Panadol would wear off and then you would have to take another Panadol um, and that can have a multitude of other side effects especially um, on your gut as well so it's best in my opinion to just stay clear of the prescriptions and do what you can to sort out the root cause naturally and therefore it'll stop producing those symptoms and then you won't have to worry about it so hopefully this video has helped you, hopefully it's changed your perspective on how you're going to treat your acne and what approach you're going to take from here on in. This really is the advice that kind of just changed the game for me last year and opened my eyes to the long term fix for acne rather than just kind of trying to take the antibiotics now and get a clearer face for the next month. Um, it's really looking ahead to the future and saying yes, okay, I do want clear skin in the next month of course, but I don't want to have to keep chasing my tail for the rest of my life. So if I do need to just kind of put up with the acne for the six, next six months or year until I balance my hormones and get things sorted, at least I know that after that the root cause will be sorted and then the acne won't just be covered up by antibiotics, it will actually not be there anymore. That symptom won't be a result of that imbalance anymore. So anyway, that's enough of me talking, but I hope that I haven't rambled too much on this video and hope that it has been super helpful in helping you and inspiring you to take this root cause approach in treating your acne. But let me know how you found this video down below and I would really appreciate if you liked the video too because it really supports my channel. If you haven't, also make sure to subscribe and go and check out my Instagram as well. That's where I kind of share my health tips and tricks and even my own personal experiences throughout the week so make sure you go and join that community over there but thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed this little sit down chat and i will see you in my next video next week